Science. So that's what we're going to be spending a little bit more time on in the second section. Um, in its most simplest definition, you might say that IO psychology is the application of psychological principles to the area of work. Unfortunately, the term work itself is oversimplified because there are a lot of factors outside of work that affect behaviors at work. So for example, think about the following. Um, if you have issues that are going on at home, let's say maybe you're arguing with your spouse or boyfriend or um, you have a, a cranky child at home like I have today, um, do those issues affect your behaviors at work? Well, they certainly affect mine and we see that in our research. What about your personality? Being an extroverted person versus an introverted person, being open to new experiences or not being open to new experiences, um, not being uh, or being prone to negative emotions. Do those things affect your work behaviors? Absolutely. What about events? For example, 9-11. Did that experience or did that event change things and the way people experience work? And you absolutely have to um, agree with me there that yes, events like 9-11 change the experience of many people for them at work. So um, we know that the area of I.O. stretches much further than the physical boundaries or what we might term the actions that are related to work. So there are many factors outside of work that affect behaviors at work. But the opposite is also true, and that is that work also affects non-work behaviors. So the same things that are going on at work, you can take back home. So if I'm really stressed and my supervisor is asking me to do a lot of things, that is going to spill over oftentimes on my relationships at home. In addition, work also affects your health. In addition to that, work also affects your mood. So the issue here is that as a result, IO psychologists, and I, I don't know if I said this earlier, but we use the term IO for industrial organizational psychologists. IO psychologists focus on the reciprocal impact of life on work and work on life. But if you're looking for a more formal definition, I'd be happy to give it to you. You can go to the PSYOP website, which stands for the Society for Industrial Organizational Psychology. PSYOP is the 14th division of the American Psychological Association. It's an association that practically everyone who's an IO psychologist or a graduate student in, in psychology, in IO psychology, belongs to. And if you go there to their website, they have a very flu flu answer for what is IO psychologist, IO psychology and the formal definition goes something like this. IO psychologists recognize the interdependence of individuals, organizations, and society, and they recognize the impact of factors such as increasing government influences, growing consumer awareness, skill shortages, and the changing nature of the workforce. IO psychologists facilitate responses to issues and problems involving people at work by serving as advisors and catalysts for business, industry, labor, public, academic, community, and health organizations. I don't know about you, but that is a mouthful and it, to me, makes things even more confusing. Um, let me tell you a really quickly, though, a funny story about me trying to explain IO psychology to a non IO, IO psychologist. Um, I was in Portland checking out grad schools and I met someone on the street um, and I uh, was asked why I was there and I said that I was checking out schools to become an industrial organizational psychologist and this guy said man you must deal with some sick mothers if you need industrial strength psychology which I thought was pretty funny. Anyways, um, one way to understand what is IO psychology is to talk about what IO psychologists typically do and this gives you in my opinion a much better understanding of what IO psychology is. So um, let's take a look at all of the different areas that IO psychologists work in. One of the big areas that IO psychologists work in is the area of selection and placement. So we are the people that are often brought into organizations to help develop tests to hire candidates. Um, we are the ones who are asked to validate those tests. In other words, to make sure that those tests are related to job performance and to make sure that those tests are related to the job that people are trying to um, get. Uh, we're the ones who analyze jobs and we're often the ones who are called in to court when employees um, who are discriminated against or who feel that they're discriminated against um, and we come in oftentimes to defend our selection procedures. 
we're also involved heavily in the area of training. So we're the ones who will come into an organization and identify what is it that people need in terms of training. We're the ones who often will conduct that training and then we'll determine whether or not that training has been effective in terms of reactions from people, whether or not people have learned things, and whenever, whether or not people, um, employees have been able to transfer those um, things that have been trained onto the job itself. Moving on, um, we are often also involved, um, and this is happening a lot, with organizational development. In other words, when organizations need to change, we're the ones who help often to plan and facilitate those changes. So oftentimes um, you'll see this when an organization is acquiring another one or they're merging with another one and we have to make some um, crucial decisions such as who is going to stay at the work, um, the workplace, who is going to, to leave. Um, how will the structure of the organization look, um, what will be the dominant culture, um, and there's a lot of things that need to happen here. So we often will analyze the structure of the organization and determine whether or not there are cultural changes that need to take place, whether or not there are other changes that need to take place, and um, this is a big area of IO psychology. We're also heavily involved in performance measure, measurement. So we are the ones who will develop performance appraisal systems um, and we are interested in helping to reduce harmful measures of work performance. So people who are stealing from their workplace, um, if you're doing naughty things like gossiping or surfing the internet on sites that you shouldn't be, um, we want to reduce that. And so we are interested in ways to to predict those behaviors and reduce them. Um, finally, we are also interested in measuring the um, utility or costs associated with performance. So um, if, if we have um, areas where um, we're losing profits, we can take a look at where um, we can reduce those, those areas or where we can enhance productivity. Moving on, we're also interested in the quality of work life for employees, and this is another big area. Um, so how do we reduce um, employee stress? How do we increase employees' job satisfaction? Or how do we just, in general, change work so that it has enhanced personal meaning for employees? Um, a good example of this is, is in one of my consulting projects, I worked um, at St. Luke's Episcopal Hospital and the nurses there were overworked and they were um, leaving uh, the, the hospital um, much faster than the hospital would like to see and we found out that it was because the nurses felt like they didn't have any um, resources to change their own work and they didn't um, derive a sense of meaning from that work anymore and so we designed a participatory change process whereby the nurses could implement changes to their own workplaces and they began to derive meaning and look at their jobs as this calling or this sacred vocation that they went into nursing for to begin with and so that was a worthwhile project. Finally, to a lesser extent, IO psychologists are interested in an area called human factors. And this is where we're essentially trying to fit the work environment to people. Um, this was more popular earlier on, but now this is kind of actually separated into its own distinct field. But one area of human factors that IO psychologists are really interested in is helping to create safe workplaces, um, or what we call improving safety culture. And this is often um, very popular in environments where there are are a lot of accidents and so um, this is also very important. Now some of you guys might be still asking the question what is the I and O all about? Well let me first say um, that there are some differences between the industrial and the organizational side but um, let me also tell you that one does not exist without the other. So um, however there are some topics that fit somewhat more neatly within the realm of the I side and somewhat that fit uh, better on the, the O side. So um, let's start with the, o, the I side. Um, the I side is what you would consider more of what we see in the HR realm of things in the organization. So they cover things like recruitment and selection and training, the designing of performance appraisals, how we promote people, how we transfer them, and finally how we might terminate people. Um, so in general, the I side is focusing on how people are different, how employees are different, and how those differences will predict work behaviors. So how people are different in terms of their intelligence and how that might be related to performance and using that in selection, for example.
The O side is much more interested in the emotional or motivational side of work. So in other words, how is it that employees respond to work itself and how they respond in terms of their motivation, in terms of different attitudes, in terms of leadership, in terms of how they work with others in teams, in terms of stress, and finally um, things like job, job design. One of the fundamental aspects of IO psychology that I really want to drive home here is that we IO psychologists follow what is called the scientist practitioner model. What this means that um, is that we IO psychologists deal with real problems. So um, we commonly deal with things like reducing violence in the workplace, sexual harassment, discrimination in the workplace, or pay issues between men and women. In other words, there is a very clear connection between the research that we, we as IO psychologists do and the issues that people deal with at work. Um, keep in mind, though, that although we follow this model, not every single person who is a researcher is a, an applied practitioner, um, nor is every practitioner a researcher. But there's a very clear connection between what we do research and the applications of that research to the workplace. And that's why we call ourselves scientists practitioners.